City Multi VRF systems were recently installed on two projects at Texas Tech University. The new baseball facility at Rip Griffin Park and the clubhouse and team facility at the Rawls Golf Course. Well, we chose the VRF system for a lot of reasons. Primarily, it fit perfectly with our strategy to change the way we build facilities at the Tech System. Uh, we were missioned by our leadership a long time ago to not just follow the same path we have done uh, in terms of facilities development, design, and, and, uh, and solutions. So when I first heard about the VRF system through uh, the partner team, I was very interested in the solution specifically to efficiencies obviously in the energy in the energy world uh, to the installation processes which I learned were, were much more streamlined than a typical standard uh, mechanical system installation and three it just became a much simpler process so overall it just supported our strategic vision of think differently get aggressive and um, and design solutions that that aren't just based off of the historical precedent at Texas Tech University Another interesting point specific to the VRF technology was not really on the um, end of day built environment, but it was really way on the front end. Something that I thought was interesting and just being 25 years in the business and being in a lot of design meetings, it was fascinating to, once we made the decision to go with the technology, we brought our architects in, architects in we brought our engineers in, the various ones, and had some deep dive discussions on how we're going to make this work. What was, what was really unique about this process, it eliminated about 70% of our meeting time, which is typically several meetings, but into a very simple version. We had, the tech, we had the information there on the technology. We talked through it, talked about the opportunities to um, compact our interstitial space, all the way to how do we power it up. And that meeting was, uh, or those meetings were um, uh, way less in, invasive on time than than in any other system we've had or any other project we've had on the campus. I was extremely nervous when I first heard about the technology from an aesthetics perspective and why we use this, and, and I'll kind of elaborate why we use the technology in the building. From a, from a mechanical electrical or mechanical air management system, no doubt, easy science. What I was concerned about was, what does it look like? Is it a big wagon thing hung on the wall or, or something that's not very sexy. Uh, in architect terms, that's important to me because people need to feel special. We've got donors specific to this project. We've got donors in those boxes who've given a substantial amount of money and they want to feel like they're in a sharp, high class environment. So what we did is uh, looked at some mock-ups and looked at uh, uh, before we actually put them up and we were very pleased with the integration into the ceiling systems. We have some fur down uh, accents that are there with color and things, and it just blends in perfectly. From a technical perspective, it was a little challenging because we had this, this new uh, unit in the wall that's a four-way throw, which was great, so we covered the room well. But we had a roll-up garage door that came up when people wanted to watch, watch the ball game, and it would potentially block it. And through just good design and managing the two together, it, it, it's still performing great. We're several games into the season, and I've had phone calls with um, what's that thing in the middle of the ceiling? It, you know, is, and, and I would explain to him what it is, and and uh, it, it's just been fantastic because it doesn't look like a mechanical box. We're trying to come up with the most efficient methods and uh, processes to build our boxes. So, without a doubt, that's the that's the biggest impact, all and uh, specific to our existing infrastructure. On the other side, uh, on, the, on it being a new infrastructure piece inside our box, it's fantastic because, one, the uh, method of installation is less invasive on the space. Now, I don't mean the space that people live and breathe in that are, in, the, in this case, in our suites and boxes and media center, but the interstitial space where you have to run your ductwork and lines and those, we've eliminated that from the solution, thus actually saving the volumetric um, investment and minimizing the, the space that typically people don't ever see, but cost uh, way more than what people would ever want to know in terms of the unknown spaces of the interstitial areas. So those two things were probably key. Um, the third benefit would be it's just right in line with us thinking outside the box. 
um, as we grow as a university and we know we're going to be adding thousands of, uh, well more than thousands of spatial areas specifically in the residence hall world. This is a key test for us and it's worked out fantastic so far in terms of repetitive space design and uh, we feel like if we can, back to the first two, stay off our back end infrastructure on the horsepower and, and provide no imp or hit no impact there and um, reduce our interstitial space uh, investment. We're being good stewards of state funds, thus driving costs down. Uh, the ultimate benefit, hopefully, and that we haven't, we we're not there yet, but the, the, rec the design criteria shows the life cycle cost on energy is, is a huge win. We just haven't been far enough down the road to really measure that yet, but the science behind it certainly proves it will be a smart investment.